children i am sanjogita and i'll be your tutor for this module before starting the module let's understand the objectives after completion of this module you will be able to list the types of cloths explain about natural and artificial cloths list the differences between natural and artificial cloths and explain about different types of matter and describe elements compounds and mixtures now that you are clear about what you are going to learn are you ready to enter into the module right let's begin then man has evolved from chimpanzee for his livelihood he utilizes nature he used leaves to cover his body to save himself from heat and cold he lived like an animal in the forest and took shelter in the caves. He used to kill animals for his food. To kill animals, he used the tools which were made of stones. He used small rocks to create fire. He also used fire as light. Gradually, he civilized, learned many things and began using different material for his comfortable living. If you observe our day-to-day -day life, we use many things made of different materials like rocks, stones, wood and iron. A good example is our house. It is constructed using different materials like rock, iron, sand, brick and cement. Rocks are used to construct basement, bricks are used to construct walls and iron is used in pillars and also for windows and gates. A house protects us from sunlight, cold and rain. Let me ask you a question. Can you answer? Did I hear a yes? Good. How do you save your body from sunlight, dust and cold? That's right. We wear clothes to save our body from heat, cold and dust. We wear cotton clothes in summer, we wear wooden clothes in winter and rainy seasons. Do you know how the cloth is made? No? Don't worry, I'll tell you in detail. Clothes are made of different fibers. Fibers are spun into threads and from the thread clothes are made. There are different types of clothes like cotton, silk, wool, polyester and terylene. Again, these can be classified into natural clothes and artificial clothes. Cotton, wool, silk and jute are made up of natural fibers. That is why these are called natural clothes. Polyester, terylene and acrylic are made of synthetic fibers and are therefore artificial clothes. Let's learn more about natural cloths. Cotton is the best of the natural cloth. It is obtained from cotton balls. The long hair on each seed is called lint. Generally, cotton balls are picked by hand. Fibers are then separated from the seeds by combing in the mills. This process is called ginning of cotton. Clean cotton is drawn out and twisted to form yarn. Simple devices used for spinning in the houses is a hand spindle called takli and charka. But this process takes longer. Spinning of yarn on a large scale is done with the help of spinning in the mills. Remember the process of making yarn from cotton fibers is called spinning. You must have seen that cloth is made up of two sets of yarn arranged together horizontally and vertically. This process of arranging two sets of yarn together to make a fabric is called weaving. Weaving of fabric is done on looms. In cotton mills, separating of seeds, ginning, spinning of yarn and weaving are done by the machines. Some professionals also make fabric on hand looms. Some looms are operated by electric motors. They are called power looms. We 
we are going to learn about silk. Do you know what silk cloth looks like? Yes, it shines brightly and it is smooth and soft. We wear silk clothes on special days like festivals and functions. The speciality of this cloth is that dust particles cannot stick to it. Do you know how silk cloth is produced? No? Let us learn this too. Silk is obtained from the cocoons of the silk moth. Cocoon is the larva of silk moth and larva completely covers itself by silk fibers and turns into pupa. This is known as cocoon. Observe the life cycle of cocoon. A silk worm lays eggs, it hatches, some other worms are born, grow and forms cocoon and becomes pupa and takes a new life. Silk worms are reared in silk industries. They are kept in bamboo trays along with chopped mulberry leaves. The silk worms eat the mulberry leaves and spin cocoons. Silk thread is obtained from these cocoons. From the silk thread, georgette, velvet, satin and silk fabric are prepared. It is also used in making parachutes and its ropes. Another natural cloth is wool. We wear wooden clothes in winter to keep our body warm. Sweaters are made of wool. Woolen clothes do not allow the body heat to go out. And that's how we feel warm. Do you know how wool is produced? No? Watch this. Wool is obtained from the fur of sheep and some other animals. After cutting the fur from sheep, it is washed and dried. Then it is bleached and dyed. The wool fibers are spun into thread. Wool fiber is elastic. Let's recollect what we have learnt about cotton, silk and wool. These are natural cloths. We also use some artificial cloths. Polyester, terylene, terricotton are made of synthetic fibers. Synthetic fibers are artificial fiber. That is why they are called artificial cloths. But how can we identify that it is a natural cloth or an artificial cloth? Are there any indications? Yes, there are some indications to identify natural and artificial cloth. You can identify them easily with these clues. Let's learn about these indications in detail. Artificial cloth absorb less quantity of water whereas natural cloth absorbs more quantity of water. That is why artificial clothes dry faster. Let's prove this with an experiment. Take a bangle and fix a piece of cotton cloth around it. Stretch and pack it tightly. Then take some colored water with a filler and put drop after drop in the middle of the cloth. Count the drops you put on the cloth until it gets wet all the way to the edges of the bangle. Keep track of time with the help of a stop clock. Let's say the cloth took 60 drops and 1 minute to get wet. Next. Take another bangle and fix a piece of polyester cloth around it, stretch and pack it tightly. Then take some colored water with a filler and put drop after drop in the middle of the cloth. Count the drops you put on the cloth until it gets wet all the way to the edges of the bangle. Watch the time with the help of a stop clock. Let's say the cloth took 30 drops in one minute. With this activity, you can understand that cotton cloth absorbs more water and polyester cloth absorbs less water. We can conclude that natural cloth 
takes more water and artificial cloth takes less water. If you burn natural cloth, it turns into ash. When artificial cloth burns, they shrink giving out the smell similar to that of burning plastics. Natural clothes are thick in appearance whereas artificial clothes are thin. And you can observe this difference if you observe them with a magnifying glass. Artificial clothes are stronger than natural clothes. To prove this statement, let's do an experiment. Take a piece of cotton thread. Hang the thread by fixing one end to a hook and the other end to a plate. Let's add weights. We start with 100 grams, then 150 grams and then 200 grams. We notice that it breaks at the weight of 200 grams. This means that the cotton thread can take up to 150 grams of weight. Next, take a piece of polyester thread. Hang the thread by fixing one end to the hook and the other end to a plate. Start adding 100 grams of weight, then 150 and then 200 and then 300. We see that it breaks at the weight of 300 grams. This means that the thread can take 250 grams of weight. With this experiment you understand that artificial cloth is stronger than natural cloth. Now that we have learned these indications, let's notice some differences between natural and artificial cloth. Natural fibers like cotton, wool and silk are obtained from plants and animals. Whereas artificial fibers like rayon, nylon, polyester are synthesized using chemicals. Natural clothes are not even in size, whereas artificial clothes are even in size. Natural clothes can be not too long, but artificial clothes are long. Natural clothes are not durable, but artificial clothes are strong and durable. Natural clothes observe more water quickly and take longer to dry, whereas Artificial clothes absorb less water and take shorter time to dry. All natural clothes except silk are rough to touch, but artificial clothes are smooth. Natural clothes turn into ashes when burnt, but artificial clothes shrink and give out a smell of burnt plastic. Natural cloth is heavy in weight, but artificial cloth is light. Natural cloth loses color easily, but Artificial cloth has long-lasting colors. Natural cloth wrinkles when it gets wet, but artificial cloth does not wrinkle when it gets wet. Along with natural and artificial clothes, we use bags and ropes in our everyday life. We get all these from plant fibers. Let's know about them in detail. You too must have seen rice is stored in bags. Do you know what these bags are made of? No? Okay, I'll tell you. These bags are made of jute. Jute is cultivated in India. So, how do we derive jute from the jute plant? The stems of the jute plant are dipped in water for a few days and with this the stems rot and then fibers are separated from the stems. The fibers are spun into threads and made into ropes. This process is called retting. Jute is used to make gunny bags and handbags. Look at this rope. This is made of coconut fiber. Coconut fiber is obtained from the outer layer of the coconut fruit. With this coconut fiber, ropes, dough mats and many other decorative items are made. Flax is another fiber we get from plants. We get this fiber from the stem of the plant. Flax fiber is used to prepare ropes and papers of good quality.